your car guy here. Today's project on this Mercedes W211 wagon. This is an E500. It is a 4Matic, so four-wheel drive. And what we've got is we've got some loose steering. So you can t grab the wheel and you can turn it a pretty good distance. So, you know, I'd say enough that you can tell you can wiggle the wheel back and forth pretty well without the car actually turning. And the reason for that is because the tie rod ends that go back and connect the steering rack to the uh, outer spindle, which controls the wheels, are bad. They've got a lot of play in them. We're gonna change the tie rod ends. It should be a pretty quick, easy job. Now, you'll see other components in there that need to be changed. Uh, I've got a whole list of projects I'm doing to this car. We're gonna do them one component at a time. So we'll be doing ball joints, we'll be doing tie rod ends, we're gonna be doing the suspension, all the struts. Uh, we're gonna be doing motor mounts, uh, just plethora of things on this Mercedes wagon. Very cool car though. I really enjoy it. But we just gotta take care of some of this stuff that's just basic maintenance. Uh, the tie rod ends, of course, are a pretty normal thing to wear out. This car is just about 160,000 miles. I would guess that the tie rod ends are original. So we'll get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the car lifted up secure it on jack stands and remove the front wheels. Okay, with our tire off, we can see our tie rod. This is the end here, and this is what's bad. All our play is right here in this. Um, but you'll see it's connected to here and here. So we're gonna have to take off this nut, and we're also gonna need to take off this. Now, we wanna mark exactly the distance from the center of this to here. And the reason we want to do that is because when we put the new tie rod end on, we want to get it as close to exactly in the same spot as possible. We're going to end up getting it aligned later, but we want to keep that pretty close as we work. So what we'll do is take a measurement from dead center on this to the end of that. And when we put our new one on, we'll make sure we're in about the exact same spot from here to here. Now you could say, hey, I'll just go wherever the threads are exactly the same. The only problem with that is there will be manufacturing differences between these tie rod ends. So by going center of this to the end of that, I'll get the same measurement, even if I have a slightly different uh, component. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually turn the wheels all the way to the left so that I have more access to get to this. All right, there's better visibility uh, for us to see what we're working on. Now, when we go to do this, what we'll have to do is loosen this nut here, and you'll wanna hold right here. If you'll see, this is cut just like a bolt or a nut, so you can hold this with a wrench and then move that. And you'll wanna hold this while we unturn that from this rod. But first, we're gonna take this nut off right here. This is a 22 millimeter nut. All right, so I got my nut loose here. I haven't taken it all the way off. I'm gonna go ahead and just break this loose, which a 13th, 16th, we'll grab this and a 13 millimeter. Now that I have my nut loose, I'm gonna take a hammer and I'm gonna strike right here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna squeeze this and then let it expand and it's gonna pop this out without having to beat it out. We're just gonna hit here and these are tapered as they come in and it's gonna pop that right out. Now that I have that popped out and I kind of returned it a little more to center just to get it some tension off of it. Now I can take my 13 millimeter and hold this while I take what will probably still be the same 13 sixteenths, maybe a seven eighths. Um, I'm going to be a little larger. So let's see. And I'll be able to grab right over the end of this. This is a 15 16 So I'm going to hold this and then I'm going to be able to turn this rod i can turn it and it'll turn because it's got a join in here or i can turn this whole outer rod to spin this off and spin my new one on okay i got my old one off and i've put my new one on i've measured my length from the dead center of this back to this so i should be pretty close now this one was giving me trouble coming off so what i did is i simply took my 90 degree cutoff wheel like this and i just cut down the top and the bottom of it right down to where it met the threads and then use a chisel to just pop it off. Saved me a lot of time and fight. I don't have a torch here in the shop, so I could have just heated it up with a torch and it probably would have come loose. But doing this saved me some time. Now I'm just gonna put this back through here. I've got to take this nut off, of course. 
We'll go back up through here and tighten this up. Then we can put our wheel back on and we're good on this side. It's the same process on the other side. You can see if you need it, there's an Allen head cut into the top of this. And the reason for that is while you're installing this nut, you might actually have this whole shaft turn. So you can hold that with an Allen head and then use a wrench to tighten this nut up because this is a lock style nut. So getting it up, getting it tight, torquing it down and you'll be good to go. All right, that's it. We fixed the loose steering and it didn't take that long. Budget yourself a half hour to an hour per side, depending on your tool situation and maybe your skill level. Remember when you're taking those tie rod ends out, the outer tie rod in, that the if it's not coming off, cut it or use a torch to heat it up. Don't fight with it too long. You'll just waste your time. So this is your car guy. Please like and share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Also stay tuned to the channel. There's gonna be a lot more videos on this particular car. I'm gonna do quite a few things to it, including lower ball joints are gonna get done. The sway bar links on the front. I'm gonna be doing all the struts and shocks on this car. This was originally an air ride car. Somebody had previously converted it to a coil spring setup. I'm gonna stay with the coil spring setup, but I'm gonna give you guys some good information on how to do the conversion yourself or to replace shocks and struts on a conversion that's been done previously with better shocks and struts. And those components that you can buy for much less money and still have Mercedes OE quality are better than some of these conversion kits. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not real happy with the conversion kit that's on here. Not just because the shocks and struts are completely whipped, but um, it looks like there was some just tacky, chintzy stuff done to build this kit. And I'm gonna, I'm not sure if that's something that somebody did to the kit after they purchased it. I wasn't the one that installed this kit or if that's just how this kit came, but it definitely needs to be remedied. So we're gonna be replacing those with Bilstein's and for a lot less money than what these aftermarket companies want for their uh, strut conversions. Anyway, this is your car guy again. Thank you for watching the video.